Hey everyone, it's Tim once again, and here is the second video. Today we're going to do, or in this video, sorry, we're going to do calcium phosphate. Calcium phosphate uh, is also, well, also, first of all, also known as calcarea phosphorica or calcarea phosphoricum. That may be what you find it under. Now, when it comes to any phosphate, any of the phosphates, you're going to find indications that have very profound behavioral or constitutional issues. <laughs> this is no exception. Uh, lots of vanity issues, lots of health issues. We'll get to them shortly. First, let me show you the main and telltale sign. Everything else, th there's, there's relevance everywhere else, but when you see this sign, it's, it becomes undeniable. And this is what we're looking at. Oh, oh, hang on, I need to change something here. Hopefully this works better now. Here we go. You see this darkness of the upper eyelid? It's almost grayish brown, almost blackish. But you see all up here, this is the same color as the rest of the skin. It's just the upper eyelid. When it comes up here, and sometimes all the way up to the eyebrows, you really th need to start thinking about adrenal fatigue. That's when you'll start looking at the whites of the eyes and the colors of the whites of the eyes as well. But anyway, we won't get into that. So what we're seeing here is calcium phosphate. So I'll show you now in a child. So here we have a young boy. You're seeing it again. Calcium phosphate. The dark or gray upper eyelids. Above that, it's the same color as the rest of the skin. Yet one more child. Same thing, dark upper eyelids, skin above it, is the same color as the rest of the skin. While this can occur even when there's a case of adrenal fatigue, you will look for a darkening just of the upper eyelid in comparison to the rest. That's when it gets a bit tricky, but when you see it like this, it's absolute. So now let me show you somebody without it. So now here we go. The color of the upper eyelid is the same as it is up here, it's the same as the rest of the skin. No calcium phosphate deficiency. Lots of other issues here, but not calcium phosphate. So now you get to see what it looks, what the eyelids look like without a calcium phosphate deficiency. So we'll go back to the beginning. And here we have our calcium phosphate deficiency again. Uh, we see a little uh, vascular convulsion here, some redness as well, but we're not going to talk about that today. So let's go through the indicate indications or things that are correlated to a calcium phosphate deficiency. And maybe we'll start with behavioral because that list is a very long list. And in this case, it's this one's pretty much complete uh, in all of the for the indicators, the, the most profound indicators. So when you talk about behavioral issues associated with a calcium phosphate deficiency, you need to think about outbursts of rage, sleepwalking. Believe it or not, sleepwalking is directly linked to a calcium phosphate deficiency. Low self-esteem, somebody who seeks reassurance constantly, lacks mental clarity, and it can be somebody who either lacks creativity or has a surplus of creativity. It can actually go either way. Uh, often very one-dimensional. And by that, I mean, um, best way to just describe that. Uh, they, they won't consider any alternatives. They, their thoughts are one way. Uh, <laughs> we see it a lot in some of my posts. I salt lamps are good, blah, 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 blah. I don't care that the evidence comes from the manufacturers themselves. Salt lamp's good. You're an idiot, Tim. You don't know anything, even though you're quoting the makers of the lamps themselves. But okay. You get what I'm saying now? Inferiority complexes. Depression. Oh, this was an interesting one that I've really not truly come across too often. Uh... But unreasonable lovesickness, somebody who just can't get over that break, breakup. And, and it's, it's such an unhealthy breakup. 
think about supplementing calcium phosphate in one of those individuals. Uh, phobias of all kinds. Um, they don't accept responsibility for their own actions. Constant, in, in, a, in a state of constant stress. Uh, in children, specifically, as we saw the two other children here, I'll move over to one of them. So in a, this young lady, she may have had, because she has a calcium phosphate deficiency, I might, the first, one of the thir first things I might ask the mother is whether, how she developed with her speech, whether there was a delay of speech in her, because that is common with people with a calcium, with ch children with a calcium phosphate deficiency. They observe everything. <laughs> One might think that I have a calcium phosphate deficiency, as creepy as I am on Facebook. Uh, self-hatred, lack of self-respect, and believe it or not, I, and I've talked about this previously, I've shown some of the celebrities, uh, and the celebrities that were caught in extramarital affairs, being cheaters, and this is one of the indications that I've shown, is a calcium phosphate deficiency, because they never feel stable and they they can't commit to anything, that's a person with a calcium phosphate deficiency. That's it for the behavioral, but I think that's enough. Again, they don't need to have every one of those indicate every one of those in indications. They can have one, two, three, five of them um, across all indications, whether it's health, vanity, or behavioral. Uh, if you can find five or more, there's a pretty good likelihood that that you're going to have, that it is indeed a calcium phosphate deficiency. So we'll move on to health now. One of the biggest things that you need to know when you see this when it comes to physical health is that if this young lady does not have a milk allergy right now, she will if the calcium phosphate deficiency is not corrected. In fact, I would actually almost bet money excuse me that's not me with gas that's my chair pushing against the back of the, or the side of the desk <laughs> anyway um yes ca milk allergies milk allergies and calcium phosphate go hand in hand always if it's not there yet it will be and supplementation of calcium phosphate can reverse milk allergies it takes time it's not in most cases, it won't happen within a year, but give it between a year and a year and a half, and in most cases, it will reverse milk allergies. Uh, they will also have liver congestion, so you'll start looking for jaundice, yellowing of the inside, corner, inside or outside corners of the eyes, yellowing around the mouth or eyes as well. And excuse the way I, the, the way I pronounce mouth, uh, my voice dictation software will only accept it, state it that way. Anemia, so low iron, uh, inconsistent periods. So the periods can be three days this month, five days next month, can come at different times. Uh, once again, a goiter. So we saw in the last one when we did calcium fluoride, now we're seeing it in calcium phosphate, that calciums, there's two different calciums, deficiencies in them can provoke a goiter, which is related to... Graves disease, or you, you can have a goiter without Graves disease, just with some form of thyroid dysfunction. Many of you talk about this one, and that's tachycardia, tachycardia, or an elevated heart rate. Tachycardia is, de is directly linked to calcium phosphate, others as well, but calcium phosphate is one of them. Heart palpitations as well, because it, calcium phosphate regulates the heart rhythm. Uh, so cold hands and feet. So a lot of you will think about the relationship to your thyroid or perhaps magnesium as being the cause, magnesium deficiency as being the cause of cold hands and feet. Calcium phosphate can do the same thing. So don't be too one-dimensional when you hear about people with cold hands and feet because there's more than one, that, one uh, deficiency or health issue that can cause that. Uh, vitamin B12 as well will do the same thing. Uh, low blood pressure, muscle pain, 
conic and conic, chronic and constant uh, muscle pain. Uh, shin splints for those of you who are runners. Uh, again, disc prolapses. We saw it in calcium fluoride. We're seeing it in calcium phosphate. We know now that you, the, the consistent there is calcium. So calcium plays a big part in maintaining our spinal discs. A chronic stiff neck, but that chronic st stiff neck comes from the constant state of stress uh, that a person would be in uh, when who has a constant who has a calcium phosphate deficiency. Lastly, for pregnant women, morning sickness direct link to calcium phosphate. Calcium phosphate will often resolve it, but I will never recommend any tissue salt to any pregnant or nursing mother who was not on the same tissue salt previously. I'll get to why in another video. They are functional minerals that can detoxify the blood, detoxify heavy metals, so much more, not what you want occurring while you're pregnant or breastfeeding. So let's get on to the vanity. So when it comes to the vanity issues, of course, the main facial sign is the first one, and that's going to be the dark upper eyelids. The pale, very light-skinned face is going to, is another one. Uh, pale lips, in this case, this is a child not really that pale. So let's go back to the others. His are a bit pale. Hers are a little little bit pale as well. Uh, and this is because anemia. Because the calcium phosphate is required for the uptake of iron and anemia can occur, then you'll get light pink lips and gums. Excessive sweating, which is also known as hyperhidrosis, uh, occurs in cases of calcium phosphate deficiencies. Dull hair, I don't know, it don't, doesn't, doesn't seem like a lot of shine there, but the depth of field of this picture might be throwing that off as well. Uh, loose and hanging skin, so uh, once again responsible, calcium is responsible for the elasticity of tissues as well, not just calcium fluoride, but calcium phosphate as well. And lastly, those of you who suffer from chronic hair breakage and your hair breaking off, you will want to consider uh, calcium phosphate as a possibility. So you'll look for th these line, uh, line, sorry, these dark upper eyelid, eyelids. So if you had uh, a lot of hair breakage and it was disturbing to you, you would look for at the upper eyelids. You would look to see if the lips were light pink and the gums were light pink if the hair was dull the individual sweated a lot if the skin was very pale in this case it looks like she's been out in the sun so she's not going to look pale but when you look in some of these spots she does look kind of pale um the hair the hair is dull and look for loose skin as well so don't just think about it in the one, one dimension in that okay i my hair is breaking so it has to be calcium phosphate Look for other things that can cause it, as, that can confirm or lend credibility to the likelihood of the deficiency that would cause it, and in this case being calcium phosphate. So I've just listed off, all oh, what, 50 different, 50 of the most profound uh, indications of a calcium phosphate deficiency. If the individual has like five or more of those, then you really want to take the possibility of a calcium phosphate deficiency seriously. And calcium phosphate, while people think of calcium phosphate in its need, uh, in the need of, as bones needing calcium phosphate, and that's the most talked about thing when it comes to calcium phosphate, it's actually required in every cell of the body and it runs a part of the calcium ion, calcium ionic channel to help balance the ele electrical charges of every cell in your body. That's why calcium phosphate is not one that should be ignored. Anyway, that's it. That's calcium phosphate, dark upper eyelids, 
when up when everything above it is the same color as the rest of the skin that is the absolute telltale that a calcium phosphate deficiency is present that's it for now bye bye